What's going on, everybody? It is January 15th, Monday slate. Happy MLK to everybody. I will be uh, taking uh, the road uh, MLK to work today. Not that anybody cares about that. <laughs> um, tale of two slates today. So we've got an early slate. Uh, not normal for the NBA, but uh, we've got five early games. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 3.30. And then we've got a late slate late slate starting at eight which is a four game slate so i'm breaking it all down it's all going to be out there all the projections will be out there um i'm ignoring the 12 30 game and the 5 30 game i don't remember who plays because they're not involved in any of those major slates so i'm only hitting the 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 main early slate and the main late slate let's get into it a lot of games first up Sixers and Raptors. Um, Sixers, I, I think I, this line is made up. Off to a great start. Almost positive this line is made up. Yeah, it is. So I'm going with the assumption that you know everything is normal. The real interesting takeaway for this for me before I get started, the Sixers have barely played this year. They've played three games in the month of January. January 3rd, January 5th, January 11th. Unless my data is just wrong, I guess I should always look at stupid stuff like that, but I started when I started looking at it and I wanted to project out the minutes, I always look at a team's most recent um, you know, couple games to try to get an idea of it. And it was just like emptiness. No no games. 3 5 oh, Yeah, that's so crazy. For a team that, you know, Health is important for them. Getting Embiid to play only... Did he play all three of those games? I think he did. Yeah. Getting Embiid that much rest has to be gigantic for them. So I'm anxious to see how that looks, especially with, you know, Lowry a little dinged up. The Raptors have been playing a ton lately. Um, so something to think about. If Philly was somehow located in, like, the Western time zones, if they were, you know, the Nuggets or something, I think this would be a really weird game. Anyway, let's get into it. Um... Okay, lots to like here. We'll slowly make our way through it all. Uh, ben Simmons is 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK. I don't, I don't mind that at all. I think this is a pretty decent matchup for Ben Simmons. Um, I'm a little worried about the turnovers, but other than that, uh, it sort of fits his game style. Nothing crazy. He's a three for me. Dario Saric uh, is 5,700 on FanDuel and 6,200 on DK. So he would need 25 and so like 28 to hit 5x on FanDuel. I mean, three straight games in the 20s, but, I mean, this dude can put up... That's three straight games in the 40s with, you know, Embiid missing one of those, but still, like, he can he can have a monster game. That pricing is wild. Wild, wild, wild. Maybe I won't call him Dario Sadic. And I left the T in there again. That's spectacular. Look, coming off a weekend, guys, it's hard. I have two-thirds of a coffee left. It's early. We'll get there. We'll get there. It'll be 45 minutes from now, but we'll get here. I love Sarge tonight. Particularly on FanDuel, that price is ludicrous. Um, he's a one for me on FanDuel because of that price. Am I missing anything here? I assume that I'm not. No, he's just... That's just a ridiculous price. Okay. I don't, like, super love the matchup just because of the way um, the Raptors minimize the three-point shot. But, God, I mean, for that price on FanDuel, it's crazy. I'll say that he's a two for me on DK because it's still a pretty good price on DK. Now, Embiid. 10-5 on FanDuel. 10-3 on DK. 
Um, I'm perfectly content with the matchup. It's not like Valanchunas or Yaka Pertle or, you know, Bebe are going to do anything. Um, so it would be tough to say that Embiid doesn't look like a good option. On my made-up line, hmm, I wonder if I should break up those. I don't know if I can do that as quickly as I would like to. Well, you, you still get a perspective. Eighth across the entire slate of games. Um... Can I change that ranking a little bit? Nah, it's, it'll take too long and I don't feel like pausing it. <laughs> um, you know, it's mid-tier total tonight. But you would think Embiid would eat against Toronto. Now, granted, their defense has been a lot better this year, but I don't know. He has not been spectacular lately. They have played this year, did not do much, but only played 22 minutes. Um... Man, I think he's in a really good spot. What am I missing there? Why doesn't Embiid just have a monster game? Uh, I, it might change, but he's a two for me. I think that everything that I see for Embiid looks spectacular. Concerns, I, I don't remember the correlation for him and... Um, Sarich. I want to say that it's negative, which kind of concerns me. Might as well check it now. I, I don't know. If you guys have seen me do this and check the uh, the matchups and the correlation stuff here, I don't have a Fantasy Lab subscription. This stuff is all free on their website, so you know, feel free to check this stuff out. Oh, no, it's slightly positive. Okay, that, that makes me feel even better then. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. Especially in the early slate where, you know, 107.5 is a decent implied total. This is a good game. I wish I could watch it. Uh, after that, I don't want any part of Redick. I think his salary is a little too high. Robert Covington is 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Not the best matchup for him. Um, he's a four for me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wholly disregard him. I think I've been cutting some people out that are on the margins a little bit too much. Um, it wouldn't be a problem to have him in a lineup. And then finally, we've got TJ McConnell. 4,400 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Uh, to me, that's just a GPP play. I need to filter this down. There we go. Um, he had 30 in the last one in 26 minutes. He's a guy that can get a lot of points in bunches because he doesn't. he's not relying on his scoring. So if the scoring pops, um, it could be an interesting night for him. I don't mind having him as a filler in a GPP lineup. Missed the L. But that's probably the extent of it. Um, I like him a little bit more than Covington just because of the price. But other than that, that's it. To the Raptors now. Raptors I have at, as a one-point favorite in Philly. So this would be a uh, 108.5 implied total, which would be 7th. Oh. I like this early game stuff. I wonder if... I guess they would never switch to something like that. I wonder why we're so content with playing baseball during the day but not basketball. Alright, so DeRozan is 9,200 on FanDuel, 9,100 on DK. I do like the game a lot for him, but man, that price sucks. Now, to be fair, I do think that I'm unnaturally low on DeRozan. Um, I think that he has become a slightly better player, and that isn't in my numbers yet. So I'm, I'm com I'd be comfortable bumping him up like a point or so. I wouldn't want to go too crazy. He does get to the line a ton. Philly does foul a lot. Um... 
I've liked DeRozan a lot lately. I don't want to go too crazy here, but I think all signs point to that being a decent matchup for him. How did he do in the earlier game? Jesus, they've played three times. Embiid only just played them once. Okay, so we roasted them pretty bad in Philly. And not so much in the two games in Toronto. But 16 free throws, 15 free throws, 8 free throws. He had 45 against them in Philly. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to bump that to a 2. If I had some combination of like... Saric, Embiid, and DeRozan. I think that I'd be <clears throat> okay with that. Um, you know, DeRozan's all scoring by all accounts. So it's not as if Saric and Embiid pull away from him in any like major way. The only thing I'd be concerned about would be the fouls. Might as well look at that quick. How often do Saric and Embiid foul, or do these fouls get picked up cheaply? So Saric barely fouls, 2.6%. Embiid is mid-tier for bigs, but neither of them are egregious. It's more Covington gets a lot of fouls. Simmons isn't the best. You know, I see that Embiid's rate is higher, but he's also a big man. So that sort of comes with the territory of being a guy in the paint. Okay. Yeah, I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, Kyle Lowry, 8,200. That, that was a lot to talk about here so far. And I'm not even done the Raptors. Lowry, 8,200 FanDuel, 7,500 DK. Um, nothing crazy for me. Like, I don't, I don't see the need to have him on FanDuel, especially with... <clears throat> the way that he's coming back and one of the big assets is really the the ability to shoot at additional free throws against Philly and that's not necessarily something that uh that Kyle does as much as DeMar um so I'd be okay with having Lowry on DK but that's the extent of it Abaka is 5700 on FanDuel 6,100 on DK, so you're looking for, you know, if you get to 30 out of Ibaka on FanDuel, that's going to be um, where you make your money, I would guess. Prior to Lowry going down, um, he had his low game in the four before that was 28. He had a 34, a 40, and a 47. Um, I think the game looks good for him. He's a FanDuel 2. Uh, he's a DK 3. Oh, um, I'm going to be playing the single entry series for FanDuel. That's going to be my like task for the week. So I'm going to do that um, all week. This first week starts today. It's the $25 single entries at FanDuel, so that's I'm going to play that all week and see where I land in the single entry series. And I'll, you know, maybe I'll do it for the entire time and see where I stack up. Might be a nice uh, barometer for where I'm at. DeLon Wright, I was uh, not good lately, man. He's been 12 points without Lowry, 19 without Lowry. He had 33 in the first one without Lowry. but And that 61-point game was quite the aberration. Now, with that said, uh, at 4,600 on FanDuel, you cannot just overlook him completely. Um, he's a 3. I wouldn't want a bunch of him just because he's the backup. I wouldn't touch him at all on DK. But at 4,600... Um, you know, for him to hit value, he needs to get to 23. He can get hot enough to do that. Other than that, um, I don't see anything else here that needs to be taken. So now we'll go to the Wiz. That was way too much time on that game, but it 
I think it's kind of essential. Oh, Mondays, man. Grr, Mondays. Uh, wife comes home today. Getting back to my normal life. That 8 o'clock lock is uh, kind of annoying now. Now I'm going to have to tell her that I'm not going to pick her up at the airport. <laughs> Air, just so everybody knows, so I'm not just sounding like a horrible person. The airport is like 10 minutes from our house, so um, it's not uh, it's not like I'm driving an hour and we're going to be in the car for a while or anything. Okay, Wiz, I got to focus. Um, Wizards, 110 implied total. They are five-point favorites against the Bucks. Nothing jumping out as exceptional here. I would think that Wall would look good, but damn, he's expensive on FanDuel. Hoo-wee. So, all right. Beal 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. I'm not really wild about it. I assume they play a lot, right? Played twice, nothing special. Never really been anything special. I don't see a need to have any Bradley Beal. I don't really love the Matt. Yeah, I'm just he's he's someone I'm off tonight. Now Wall, oh, man, ten seven on FanDuel, nine seven on DK. I do. Yeah, that's such a big gap. So you would need him to get to, you're looking for, fit, like let's say 55 on FanDuel is your goal. And I know that he's been around there lately because I've had him. So he had 48 and 55. He had 62 in the previous game. Been playing really well. Um, man, that 10-7 price. Like if you were 10-2, I would feel so much different about that. What would that move that to? I would feel so much better about that. I like the matchup, though. I think that he's going to be able to get to the rim at will and draw some fouls. I mean, he takes an exceptional amount of shots at the rim. Milwaukee gives them up like gangbusters, and you know they're one of the worst fouling teams in the league. Wall shoots more free. I, I expect Wall to shoot more free throws than anybody else on the squad. Um, I'm going to say that Wall is a DK2. Now, I, it, I'm going to go straight to... I hope that I could work Wall into a lineup. I won't, be able to, I won't be able to tell until we toss these into the optimizer, but I think I like Wall tonight because of that matchup. Otto Porter is 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Uh... So 33 would be your goal on FanDuel. He's just been at like 29 recently. Doesn't get to the line at all with any sort of vigor. Um, I don't mind the price, but he's a four. Markeith Morris, 4,600 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. He's been getting additional run. You need 23 on FanDuel. Um, not going to get enough benefit from the corner threes. Uh, like, he's a pretty solid GPP option. Especially if you think that he can get those 29 minutes. Um, yeah. I'm going to say FanDuel 3, DK 4. And then Gortat. 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. That's a shame. I was really hoping that uh, his price was still going to be a little deflated here, but it is not. 
Um, so that's a pass for me now. He has been getting additional minutes, um, playing well. He had 40 fantasy points um, two nights ago, but the price bump is prohibitive. And then Kelly Oubre, 4,000 on FanDuel, um, so you'd need 20. I don't mind him in a GPP setting on FanDuel. Let's say FanDuel 3, DK 4. To the Bucks. God, I'm talking way too much about these early games. I'm not really the best at pacing these things. It would probably be better if I did, you know, like even the slightest amount of research before I started doing this, but then you're not getting the raw information. You're not getting the, the off-the-cuff stuff, and I think that's the most important part of it all. So, 105 implied total, 11th on the full slate. It's mid-tier for the early slate. <clears throat> the only real bad one will be the Hawks. Everybody else is sort of the same. Uh, Giannis, 10-5 on FanDuel, 10-2 on DK. This feels like a really good game. Um, I guess Otto Porter would guard Giannis? I feel like he probably plays really well against the Wizards. Not been playing well overall, though. Crater, 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 crater. Crater, 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 crater. Ooh. Yeah, he had a big one there in January. So that would have been, oh, in, by in January, I mean nine days ago. Um, so that would have been with Bledsoe, which is interesting. He's at 1100 for that one. I, yeah, I, it would be hard for me to say that I didn't like Giannis. Uh, it, it's just a good matchup. Kunumbo. I don't like him more than DeRozan. I don't like him more than Embiid. So, he's. I'd like him more than Ben Simmons, but. It's probably a three. Um, he's a three, if only because. His performance has been so down for a large amount of games recently that I I have a hard time like throwing myself full bore behind him. Middleton is 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Uh, not really wild about it. Doesn't seem like a game where he would, or like signs point to him going off. One second. Okay, there was a quick pause there to uh, let the dogs out. Who, 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 who? Um, passing on Middleton. Brogdon, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. So he's getting crazy minutes lately. Um,. If you're lucky, you can get him on a night where he pops this 41 burger, but dude is just hyper consistent in the mid-20s. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I like him again. That FanDuel price is pretty tasty. 25, you know, he needs 27. He's got these increased minutes. He should be right there. Um, it's a three, just because I think that he lacks the the real upside on a consistent basis but other than that yeah what's there not to like dude plays well Bledsoe is 7500 on FanDuel 6900 on DK um I feel like he's been quiet lately yeah. two 35 plus point games recently plus a 41 so maybe I'm just stupid he needs 
like 39 though for value on FanDuel. Um, I'm gonna say that Bledsoe is just a DK three for me. It's I'm not super fond of it. Henson is 25 minutes. Uh, yeah, 25 minutes. 5100 on FanDuel, 4500 on DK. Needs to get to 25. I will pass. Let's get off of this game. Hawks hosting the Spurs. 99.25 implied total. Worst of all the games, regardless of slate. I don't think there's going to be a ton to look at here. Hawks are healthy now, so they've got a lot of bodies. A lot of not very good bodies, too. What do we got? Okay. Schroeder, 7,500 and 7,000. I'm fine there. Prince, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. That's not bad. You need 27 or so. Had a big time stinker in the most recent one. But can get there if need be. You would think he'd get a lot of run in this sort of game, or ha at least have the potential for it. Um, I'm not going to go crazy, but he'd be a guy I'd want to have a little bit more of. Ilyasova, sort of the same deal from a price perspective. Nope, not even remotely close to typing that in the right spot. Um, yeah, I'd say he's a three again. And then the only other guy I want to take a look at here would be Baysmore. 5,200 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. 26 gets you value on FanDuel. Did it in the last one. Had a 40 burger, had a 36 burger. Um, again, he's the type of guy that should be playing a lot against the Spurs. You know, at, you know, a wing, particularly when uh, when Kawhi plays. That is, um, but you know, nothing too crazy. It's a terrible total, so you don't want to focus too much on him. To the Spurs now. I'm anxious to take a look at Kawhi here. Um, Spurs with the 106.75 implied total, uh, middle of the pack on the full slate. <sighs> okay, Aldridge is, oh man, this is bad. All right, Aldridge, 8,800 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. You're needing 44 on FanDuel. I'm going to go ahead and look the other way here. <laughs> Not a great game for Aldridge. Kawhi, 9,400 on FanDuel. Do I have 46 in 28 minutes two nights ago? Man, I love Kawhi. So good. 9,400 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK. I've only got him in for 28 minutes. You know, the way that he's been playing. What's his per minute rate? It's got to be through the roof. Yeah. He's had games 1.6, 1.6. Well, he's 1.6 in January. <laughs> Dude's been torching teams. I don't... Okay, so you need him on FanDuel to hit 5x... You need him to get 47 fantasy points, which is what basically what he got in 28 minutes here. But the Hawks are bad. That's like the best case scenario for him. Um, so I, I can't until you know that he's going to play like 32, 33 minutes. The the spur like the the blowout potential is incredible here. If they're up by 10 or 12 going into the fourth quarter, you'd have to expect that you don't even see Kawhi in the fourth. Um, so I just have to ignore that. Kawhi being back kind of limits Anderson. 
Um, I'm not super interested in POW. Tony Parker, 3,800 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. You know, if he can get to 20, which he doesn't ever do, I, I think I'm just ignoring this whole game, or the whole Spurs side of this game. Like, it could just as easily be like, oh, Bryn Forbes had 20, and Bertans had 20, and the Spurs won by 37. So, yeah, whatever. Brooklyn. Nets, 105.75 implied total. Tenth on the whole day. I didn't think about it till right now, but my stupid ass should have did these videos separately. Should have just recorded a early slate video, recorded a late slate video, and doubled up on the views. That would have been a great idea if YouTube would decide to monetize me. But instead, we're going to wait two full months and get 120,000 more views than I needed. So thank you, YouTube, for uh, slowly taking $1.50 or whatever the ad rate would be out of my pocket for every video that I do. Who, But, you know, you continue to get that money, though, for sure. That makes more sense. Fucking crooks. All right, Dinwiddie. 6,400 on FanDuel. 6,600 on DK. That's my rant. I'm, I'm fed up at this point. I know I'm not the only one. Uh... Dinwiddie needs 32 to hit value against Jarrett Jack and the New York Knicks. Um, I love Dinwiddie today. He might be a one for me. 6,400 on FanDuel. He needs 32 to hit 5x for FanDuel. He had 30 in his most recent game, 46 on the night before that. Uh, he's had 54, 40. I mean... This is a dude that can provide a monster number. Um, the, it's not like the Knicks are some sort of incredible defensive matchup. Uh, I love Spencer Dinwiddie tonight. I honestly think he's a, he's a one for me on FanDuel. He's a two for me on DK. Um, I would have liked a his price is a little bit too high, but. I'm going to end up having a lot of Spencer Dinwiddie. And by a lot, I mean he's probably going to be one of my point guards. Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. 7,000 on FanDuel. 6,500 on DK. So that's 35 on FanDuel. It's been right there lately. No reason to suspect that he couldn't do it again. Price is a little high. Oh, shit. I spelled that right, right out of the gate. Um... So I'm going to say he's a three, but I like that there. Does Dinwiddie have any? So it looks like I might have a couple Brooklyn guys. So who stacks well with Dinwiddie? Hollis Jefferson, Lavert, Carol Crabb are all fine. Um, only guys that you don't want are Jeremy Lin which will be fine. Isaiah Whitehead, which should be fine. And D'Angelo Russell, which also should be fine. So, good. Alan Crabb, 4,600 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. 23. Been playing a lot better lately. You know, th multiple games over value. Some games in the 30s. Um, game fits him really well. Knicks give up threes a lot. Especially above the break. Um, price is a little bit higher than I would like, but uh, still a three. Damari Carroll. <sighs> okay. Ah, missed that L. So, 5,200 on both sites. That's 26 for value on FanDuel. He's had 31 and 35 since missing two games. Um... Love Damari Carroll here. He's kind of like a two and a half to me, which I'm not going to, um, you know, it's obviously a made up thing, but I like him a lot tonight. And then Karis Levert, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. And I've been touting Karis Levert a lot. Basically on my January 8th, 10th, and 12th videos, I would have said 
I like Karis LeVert a lot. And then he would score 17, 19, and 17. I, I didn't have him Saturday night, and he had 31. So, <laughs> fitting. Uh, I'm fine with it, though. So judging that, judging on that, I would have a bunch of Dinwiddie. Um, I would prioritize Carroll over Hollis Jefferson, Crab, and Lavert. But I think rotating those guys through is not a bad idea. The New York Knicks, um, 103.25 implied total, not very awesome. Oh boy. How many minutes did Porzingis play last night? So Knicks are on the back-to-back. -back. Um, you know, obviously uh, it's, there's not really any travel. They're at home, but New York is New York. Uh, Porzingis played 44 minutes last night. They've played a lot of games recently. This is an exceptional matchup for Porzingis. So it's hard to walk too far away from that. But Chris Stapp's Porzingis is 8,900 on FanDuel. He's 8,300 on DK. Um, Forty-eight. Man, I like him a lot today. Knicks are... Eh, it's not that interesting. Um, am I crazy? A little bit. He has not been playing well this year. I'm going to say three. I just, I can't trust him. And coming off of that big 44-minute game last night, you know, you got to figure, he, he has complained about fatigue in the past. And by the past, I mean like, you know, this year. Courtney Lee, 5,400 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. That is so much better on DK. It's insane. Uh, you need 27 on FanDuel for value. Similar for 6X on DK. Look, he gets there. He gets these 30-point games, but he also gets these 15-point games. Um, it's a really, really good matchup for him from a mid-range perspective, but I'd say I'd only take him on DK. Tim Hardaway Jr., now that he is back, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. So he needs 27 on FanDuel. He had 41 fantasy points last night. He had 27 in his return. Um, I haven't read anything about him being out for this back-to-back. -back. Okay. Um, so if he plays, he looks really interesting. Uh, it's possible that he doesn't because of this is a back-to-back. -back. So no news as of yet. I would guess we'll know more. Um, you know, hopefully before lock, but who knows? He's actually an exceptional play. Um, he's a two for me on FanDuel, if we know that he's going to be on the court. And then Jarrett Jack is 5,600 on FanDuel. This is a soft pricing today. 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Um, that's a great, like... He's been playing really big minutes lately. You need him to get to 30, 28 for value on FanDuel, which he's done four straight games, essentially. Um, so it's hard to say no to that, but I don't like that price on FanDuel. So on FanDuel, he's a four. On, uh, on DK, he's a three. And if you really wanted to tell me that you like Jared Jack a lot tonight, I'd be okay with saying, you know, load him up. K 
Cantor, 6,500 and 6,100. That's probably a little bit too pricey, but he has been getting the increased minutes. He's had four out of his last five games have been 33 or higher, which is just at value. Um, so I don't think that he's in a position to like crush value, but you know he feels like a pretty good cash play in this scenario. And now the final game of the early slate would be the Chicago Bulls hosting the Miami Heat. Bulls with a are a one point favorite uh, at home. Welcome back, Zach Levine. Okay, Chris Dunn, 8,000 FanDuel, 7,100 DK. Good for you. We need 40. It's a pretty good matchup for Dunn. He had 55 in his last game. He's hit 40 in, we'll say, four of his last five. Um, I wouldn't be super worried about any point guard defense. Bulls don't get to the line. Miami allows it, but that's not really part of Chris Dunn's game or really anyone's game on the Bulls. Um, he's a FanDuel 4 for me. I don't really love the price. I think there are much better options out there in those early slate, but, you know, he's a DK 3, I guess. Marking in 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. I don't really like this much one way or the other 33 he's done it in the last two including the monster 54 point game you know he's right there in most of these games um i don't i don't love the matchup for it so i'm gonna say that i would only really want any of marking in on dk and even that's probably minimal Ooh, chair stuck After that, I, you know, I still need to see how this all shakes out. Levine pulling 20 minutes away from the backcourt is important. Uh, Miritich's price is not great. Um, only got, like, Rolo, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. That's 22 and a half for value on FanDuel. No, I'm just I'm I'm good across the board there. That that's forcing it. To the Heat, um, pour one out for Dion Waiters season. Gonna have surgery on that ankle. I know that's not exactly new news anymore, but I don't know. And now I'm just typing in Dion Waiters as if that matters. Uh, you know, I'm sure that's a bummer for him. I'm sure that's a bummer for the Heat, but dude's getting paid. Ooh, this is gonna be a Wayne Allen tonight. Okay. Josh Richardson, 5,700 and 5,800. Um, so, you know, if you can get to 30, that'd be dope. Three straight games in the mid-20s, but three straight games in the 30s before that. Uh, man, Miami's offense is really just not very good at anything. They don't get offensive rebounds. They turn the ball over like crazy, and they don't shoot free throws. Um, with that said, Josh Richardson, come on down. It's not a bad, not a bad look. I don't want any Adragic against Dunn. Tyler Johnson on DK looks good. He's five thousand. He would need thirty to get to six X. Um. Hasn't done it in his last three, but has been mid-20s in his last two. Had a 39-point game earlier in January. Um, I'm going to say that he's a FanDuel 4 and a DK 3. Wayne Ellington, 5,100 FanDuel, 4,700 DK. It's a great matchup. He shoots 84% of his shots from three. Um... 
the Bulls tend to give up additional threes. They're in the, the bottom tier of teams defending the three. You would need 28 from Ellington to go 6x on DK. Um, it's had two games just under that, two games just over that in his past two weeks, so be hard-pressed to say that Ellington doesn't look good, relatively speaking. Um, I don't see anything super interesting in Whiteside, so that would probably be it. So that's probably my early slate. So that's where we stand for the early slate, if you want to pause there to take a look at that short list. Um, but that's where we're at right now. I think Dinwiddie, Dario Saric are the two best values on the board. Um, I really like Embiid. I like John Wall. I like DeMar DeRozan. Um, and I like, if we know that he's playing, on, at least on FanDuel, uh, Tim Hardaway. And the rest of that can be filled in. Now we'll move to the late games. I am running late. Cavs hosting the Golden State Warriors. 113 implied total for the Cavs. They are five-point underdogs at home to the defending champs. Uh, you would expect everybody in Cleveland today. So that means Isaiah, Wade. We should be getting everybody that you would expect to see in Cleveland barring any future trades. LeBron is 11-4 on FanDuel, 11-1 on DK. I'm going to need to freeze this now, too. Uh, so he needs 57 on FanDuel. It's hard not to like it. Although he had a absolutely atrocious game. I always feel bad saying, like, I'm going to fade LeBron. Because by default, you're going to get, like, 25% of the people that hear this or see this. Be like, how can you fade LeBron? He's the best of all time. And I agree. Like, he's in, the dude's incredible. But... Sometimes it's just price and matchup, and I think that this isn't the best matchup for him. There are, there should be better values on the board. We've got a Laker or we got a Clippers Rockets game at ten thirty that should be chock full of people that would be interesting. You know, we've got the Thunder game also at eight o'clock, where you can be spending up on Westbrook against the Kings. I just like I can't imagine loading up on LeBron in this case. He can go off, sure, but integrating Isaiah now, too, that's, there's just too much going on. There's too many moving parts. Cleveland's playing like shit. Look, if anybody can make you feel wrong about a decision, it's clearly LeBron James. But that's not a, that's not a direction I want to go today. I'll be wrong, I'm sure. JR, 3,600 and 3,700. I mean, it's hard to get super stoked about that. He's going to, I mean, you know, he can go off in a GPP, sure. But, you know, you could also get games like this. Two straight games. 2.7 and 2.2 fantasy points. It's just like, how do you, what do you do there? Love is 7,000 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. I'd like to see how he actually performs in fantasy against Golden State. Yeah, he went ham sandwich on them earlier. 31 and 18. And then, you know. Is this showing me the right shit? Where are the... I guess... No, there should be... 
was he out last year? I can't. I have no memory. There's, they've played too much. Um, like if he's on the court, it's fine. They, if they're trying to keep up with him offensively, they don't have. So here's the thing. Now they don't really have the ability to try to do this defensive nonsense. Or at least they don't appear to be trying to do that. If they're going to try to outscore him, then Love is out on the court as a stretch five. I'm interested in Love on FanDuel at 7,000. Um, nothing crazy, though. I, I'm, I don't have any interest in Isaiah. I don't think... He has not been spectacular. Look, he can get hot. I wouldn't expect it. Uh, but I won't have any Isaiah. Uh, I likely won't have any Dwayne Wade either. But I will say that he's not an awful play if you were looking for someone steady. But we want to look at Golden State. Warriors, 118 implied total. Number one on the full day. Number one in the late slate by five points over Cleveland and by seven over the Thunder. They're just clearly the number one implied total team today. So, whew, okay. Clay Thompson is 6,700 on FanDuel. He is 6,400 on DK. I do like that price a lot. How has Clay done against Cleveland? He usually, like, eschews offense for defense, right? If I'm remembering correctly. He's just been perfectly acceptable. If he fits in, he fits in. Um, it's a pretty tasty price on DK, though. Draymond, 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Uh, this seems like an absolutely phenomenal game for Draymond. Yeah, that doesn't shock me at all. He's been playing really well, too, right? Yeah, he's been really good this year. This is a really good game for Dre. Um, so you need 41 to hit 5x on FanDuel. He's had... Four games above 40... In his last two weeks, 46, a 54, a 53. Um, I like Draymond a lot. And then Durant and Curry. Uh, Durant is 10 7 on FanDuel, 9,800 on DK. And then Curry is 10 2 on FanDuel and 10 2 on DK. <sighs> okay. Um. I mean, obviously, I prefer the Warriors to the Cavs tonight. I think Durant is a 2 on DK. The 9800 price tag. I mean, you only need him. You know, he can get to 60. That's 6x. It's Kevin Durant. Uh, Curry, I'm a little bit more concerned about. In fact, look... Again, this is the same situation as LeBron. The way that this game sets up and the price, I'm not super like married to the idea of Curry. Maybe I should be. But... I don't love it. I don't love it. OKC hosting the Sacramento Kings. They are 
11 and a half point favorites at home. Oop, dogs. Crazy dogs. We back. Grabbing the thunder. Seamless editing, I'm sure. And by editing, I mean I don't edit shit. I just hit pause. Russ, 12-2 on FanDuel. Good God. 11-5 on DK. <laughs> How good of an offensive rebounder is Russ? Yeah, as I thought. 96 percentile for point guards. Sacramento, not the best offensive rebounding team. Something to keep in mind. He needs... 61 for 5x on FanDuel. Oh my god. That is a, just a monster. He's had two 60-point games in his last two weeks. Multiple mid-50s. Um, look, it's hard for me to say that I don't love Russ today. I think the matchup is exceptional. I think that he's going to be able to do, by all accounts, whatever he wants. It's 11.5 on DK. That price is amazing as well. You just have to take into account the fact that the Kings are freaking terrible. And this game might limit the amount of time Russell Westbrook's on the court. Now, Paul George is 8,300 on FanDuel, which is awful. 7,400 on DK, which is less awful. He would need 41 to hit value. Um, he's only had one game at that level in the past two weeks. Um, for him to get to 5x on DK, you're looking at 37. Uh, that's a little bit more feasible. Um, I think that you can have some Paul George on DK and not be too worried, but I wouldn't go heavy. And then Mello is 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Uh, that's 33. Yeah, I don't see a lot of value in that number either. Adams is 6,200 on DK. I don't see a ton there. Has the ability to get there. How good of an offensive rebounder is Adams? Okay, so one of the best in the league, if not the best offensive rebounder in the league. How is he on putbacks? Where is that shit? Where the hell did that table with all the putbacks and like half court offense and shit go? Ah, it's under team stats. <laughs> so, where is it? Offensive play context. Half court and putbacks. Okay, so they're really good, which makes sense. On putbacks. That could be a sneaky, good uh, Stephen Adams game tonight. Um, might be a decent contrarian-ish center. Now we'll go to the Kings. I'm so far behind, it's insane right now. Kings, terrible implied total. Uh... 99.5. It's the worst in the late slate. Second worst of the entire day. All right. De'Aaron Fox is not playable on FanDuel. He's 4,900 on DK. So that's, we'll say 25 to 30 would be an acceptable range for him. He's been right where you need him to be over his past five games. Um, no duds. You know, conceivably could get some extra run. Uh, I actually think he's a DK too. That's going to sound really ridiculous, but I like this matchup for him a lot. I hope that he gets those minutes. Yeah, we'll see. You would think he would get run in garbage time, but who knows. Bogdan is 5,400 and 5,200. Um... um He's a four. 
Willie Cauley Stein, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. He needs 30 and change. 49 burger in the last one. Two 40 point games um, in the past two weeks. <sighs> it's not going to be it for me today. I don't really see anything else that jumps off the page for me. It's a really bad matchup. So next up, Utah Jazz hosting the Pacers. I have the Jazz as a two-point favorite against Indiana. This line is not out yet. Uh, pull run out for Tabo, done for the year. So that uh, sneaky Tabo value that pops up every now and again is gone by the wayside. So we've got Donovan Mitchell, 7,400 FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. Uh, on the surface, I think that I love Donovan Mitchell. That's 37. He's right around there regularly. Not a ton of defense coming out of Indiana. What's their actual defensive rating? Twenty third in the league. Yeah, I like Donovan Mitchell a lot. Um, it's probably a straight two for me. Joe Ingles, five thousand on Fanduel, forty seven hundred on DK. It's a really good matchup for him. Um, Indiana gives up a ton of threes. There's not a like you're you're hoping for the best when you have Joe Ingles, but he's been pretty solid. You know, 23 points across the board in four of his last five with one 30-point game. Um, I don't, like, I never love Joe Ingles, but this would be a case where if that's the last position you fill and you have the money for Joe Ingles, I think that's a that's the way to use him. Derek Favors is 6,300 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. No Miles Turner, so that means Favors gets a steady dose of Sabonis. Now, Sabonis, at least earlier in the year, I'm going to confirm now, was a bit foul-happy. So he was not the best last year. He's middle of the pack fouling this year. I would assume that Favors draws a lot of fouls. Yeah, he's 70th percentile for bigs in shooting fouls drawn. Um... You need him to get to 30 plus. Hasn't done it in the last two. He's done it once in his last two weeks. Um, is he a decent offensive rebounder? He's an above average offensive rebounder against a team that's not very good at it. Uh, this could be a really good game for Derek Favors. Um, he's someone I'm going to have, I believe. I think that Derek Favors is in a really nice spot. How does Favors correlate with Donovan Mitchell? Because if they correlate well together, there's a decent chance I have them both. I'm excited. Come on, positive. Yeah. All right, the chances of me having Derek Favors and Donovan Mitchell in my single entry on FanDuel, pretty high. Ricky Rubio, 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. One thing to note, Howell Neto expected to play. Um, so keep an eye on that. But Rubio needs 25 and change on FanDuel. He's done that three times in the last two weeks. Two 33-point, basically 34-point games, which would be ginormous. Um, you know, I'm not super worried about any defense on the Pacers again. I think Rubio is, uh, I think he's a Fandle too. Uh, I, where did Rubio land in that? Rubio's correlation with Mitchell is bad. It's correlation with Favors is neutral. Um, I like Rubio there though. Uh, I probably won't match him up with Favors and Mitchell, but I might be overreacting to the Jazz here in this particular game but I kinda like it 
And finally, Rodney Hood, 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. You need him to get to 23 on FanDuel for 5x. He's done it once in the past two weeks. He's also a guy that can put up 40. Um, you know, offensively, this game should fit him. I have to say that he's a 3 because he just simply hasn't been very good. Uh... But it wouldn't surprise me if he went ham. It's a really good game for the Jazz. I'm going to have to dig deeper into it. I'm glad it's a later game. But I really like the Jazz there. They're just jumping off the page. Between the matchup, the way that they play, it all looks really good. All right, Indiana. Pacers, uh, 102.5 implied total which would be 16th on the full day. It's second lowest on the late slate. Okay. Oladipo, 9,300 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. I don't think that I'm going to have any part of Oladipo. You need 40-something. He's done it twice in his last five. Um, yeah, I'm just going to avoid Oladipo there. It wouldn't shock me if he went crazy, but that's not my spot. Thad is 5,800 and 5,500. You need 28. No. Boyan, no. Corey Joseph, 4,100 on FanDuel, 3,900 on DK. He's the only guy I'm a little bit interested in. He's been getting an uptick in minutes. Had a bit of a big one last night. Had a couple decent games before that, too, because he only needs 20. So he's had... You know, six and seven X games in his last two weeks, at least three times. Um, so you can't get rid of him completely. Let's say Corey Joseph is a three. Let's get off this game. Last game of the night. Clippers hosting the Rockets. I've got it uh, even with a 109 implied total. Um, it's going to depend on a little bit of news, but that's just my best guess right now. It's in L.A. see what we got here okay Lou Williams is 9100 on FanDuel 8900 on DK I'm not looking that direction I'm not looking at DeAndre on FanDuel I'm not looking at Blake Griffin on FanDuel just I'm not I'm not there just need too many points uh only guy I'd have any interest in would probably be Tyrone Wallace on FanDuel. He would need 21. Um, he can get there. You just have to hope that he still plays those minutes, which at this point I don't see any reason that he wouldn't. Is there any... Where's the Clippers? Yeah, DeAndre's questionable. So if DeAndre's out, we obviously want to look at Willie Reed. Um, but for right now... Man, I don't think I like anything on the Clippers. If DeAndre plays, he might look tasty. How has he been against the Rockets? God, nah, I can't get there. I don't really want any part of the Clippers. Houston, on the other hand, I hope I do. Man, I feel like the early slate was loaded with value. There's not a ton of it in the late slate. Let's 
So Ariza is fifty five hundred on FanDuel. He's fifty or he's five thousand on DK. So you're looking at like twenty seven for Ariza. Um, uh, expectation is uh, Luke Mbamute is back. Um, if he's not, those minutes are going to get redistributed to Anderson and Tucker, and it could be interesting. Ariza has had two big games with Harden out. Um, we'll have the opportunity to maybe shoot a couple extra corner threes. I think he's a fan duel four and a DK three. Paul, 10-8 and 10-3. Um, so we're looking for 55 on FanDuel. He's done that once without Harden since Harden's been out. Um, had one other 50-point game, but mostly been in the mid-40s. Um, now, there's not a ton of point guard defense. Uh, Paul does get to the line, which the Clippers are not particularly great at stopping. They do give up. A lot of long mid-range shots, which is right in Chris Paul's wheelhouse. Obviously, this is a Chris Paul revenge game against the Clippers. Uh, I like it at a three. I wouldn't want to go too crazy. Um, I would guess that he's going to be over-owned because of the revenge narrative, which kind of means I would probably want to go in the opposite direction. Gerald Green is 4,600 on FanDuel. He would need 23 to hit value. Um... Not the best in the last one, but he's had a couple games in the 20s, and obviously he had those first two crazy games after Harden was gone. But I'm, I'm okay with it. FanDuel, at least. Um, I don't feel necessarily the same way on DK. Uh, Ryan Anderson, 4,500. You know, it's not really the best game for him. He needs 22-ish. Obviously, you can get there if he's shooting. Um, this doesn't feel like that game, though. The only guy I'd want to look at would be Clint Capella. Um, especially if DeAndre is out. But Capella is 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Um, you're looking for 40 out of Capella to hit value. He's done it twice with Harden out in these last five. Um, he had 36 in another game, so which isn't horrible. But two games at value in the last five, I'm willing to take a shot there. Uh, the price is a little prohibitive. He's a little bit better on DK, but I'll take it as a three. And that's it. So from, what's the first one? The Cavs. So just this section here is going to be the short list for the late slate. I actually like Utah the most. Um, I'm interested in Draymond across the board. Uh, Durant looks okay on DK. De'Aaron Fox looks okay on DK, or looks good on DK. But right now it's more of a Favors and Donovan Mitchell thing for me. Um, I do not have the time to be able to run the optimizer for these, unfortunately. But projections will be updated. You guys have my thoughts. Um, you guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, the whole nine yards. Uh, I'll be on Reddit, you know, so hit me up with any questions. Hit me up on Twitter. Um, live before lock will start at 7 tonight since the tip-off is not until 8, so we've got a little bit later of a start. Um, there's like a 5% chance that that doesn't happen and that I do go pick up the wife. But other than that, uh, I should be there live before lock. And uh, good luck on this dual slate. Have a good one.